If there is one thing that we Valorant enjoyers can agree on, it is that we love comebacks. There is no feeling quite like seeing a team win against all odds. In the past two years, Valorant has given us some historic games made possible by a truly incredible play. So I spent the last couple of days researching some of the biggest comebacks in the VCT history. So without any further ado, here are my 5 favorite comebacks of all time. It is September 9th and we are in Istanbul, Turkey for Valorant Champions 2022. Within the upper quarterfinals, Leviathan is facing Loud for a spot in the semi-finals of the second World Championship in the history of Valorant. The teams meet on Icebox, the first map of this best of three and the map pick of Loud. Leviathan was the first team to qualify for the playoffs and also made a lot of waves by winning every single pissed around they have played so far. And they have continued in the same fashion. They won the pissed around and quickly managed to close the half on an 8-4 scoreline. But it was the second half where things really started to get interesting. Leviathan has lost their first pissed around within this tournament but did not lose their composure. They forced into to the bonus round of Loud and brought the scoreline to a 12-6 scoreline, pushing Loud with their backs against the wall. If Loud wants to have any saying on their map pick, it's now or never. Up top though, Melzer wants to take the fight right, to them underneath! Hug in the corner, and King will eventually be punished. But Melzer's doing so much work for them, now just down to Adverso, the 1v2, dodging, juking, playing the movement around, Maze less he finds his target. With the help of some timings, Loud is finally back on the board. And heroics like this by Sadak slowly brought back round after round for Loud, bringing us to a thrilling scoreline of 12 to 11. With ultimates available for both sides, a clash is inevitable. But it's just narrowly avoiding the shots. Side to side, but eventually the damage is going to be sweeping through them. But Sassy again, being the miracle worker for Loud in OT. Sassy has been an absolute maniac and the shots are fired. One after the other, only three players left standing. But do they have enough to try and offset it with the Viper's Pit online? Is a snake by what a peak by Asbus! And they can hear it. The defuse is online. A triple swing, sticking it, sticking it, sticking it! Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Loud did the impossible. They brought the map back to OT and managed to win against all odds. With the momentum gained through that comeback, Loud would be crowned as champions later in this tournament. Let's stay in Istanbul for another matchup, which brought us one of the greatest comebacks of all time. DRX is facing Furia in a group stage match on their map pick Ascent, and the Black Panthers came out swinging. Fights now this walk towards the site. Flash out, keeps oh seen, doesn't even oh. get the chance, it's messing around the corner for three. But they don't know about the player on the back of the site now. They have that information to play with, they need to take him down though. The plan needs to come in now, and there's no time! Furia did not give DRX an inch, and even when DRX managed to do something, they ran out of time before they could even secure a round. It was at round 9 where DRX finally managed to put a round on the board in order to path the way for a 9 to 3 hull. Some people might felt a possible 9 3 curse here, but Furia started the second half just as dominant as the first one. They totally crushed DRX and leading the map with an almost unlosable scoreline of 12 to 4. But well, I said almost unlosable. With their backs against the wall, DRX must commit to the scrappiest buy they can get and hope to turn things around. And end up with a round and now they're up against pistols! But he got two. He got two there. So even despite some amazing early duels for DRX, they're only one man ahead. Gotten themselves the plant and now a 2v3. They win a lot of these and they've already seen bloods on the site, but nothing they can really do about that. Khalil is left alone, shut down, and DRX find five. DRX brought the map all the way back to a 12 to 11 scoreline, and it was at that moment in which RB went absolute demon mode. But he might go down to the Hunter's Fury. He barely avoided it. Just about stayed alive. Oh, RB though, he's putting up the hole that DRX need. A 3v3, a 3v2. RB single-handedly keeping this team alive. The ace almost at hand. The shorty's out to try it. It's stolen as this half was. After losing 8 consecutive rounds, Furia seemed beaten already, but they once again pushed through and went to map point. While DRX once again must win the next round, you would probably expect them to play it safe and to not risk anything. Is he gonna dash forward? No. 
He is. He's going up and in. The flash is there, and he's got you two. Maniac. Buzz is still going. Another dash online to work with. He has the escape to play with, and he doesn't oh. even need it. Four for Buzz. Another phenomenal DRX round. If there was any moment in which I thought DRX cannot lose that match, then it was this one. DRX kept flying and won the map by 16 to 14 with one of the biggest comebacks in the history of Valorant. We are at Champions 2021 and we are watching a group stage match of Gambit Esports vs Team Vikings to determine who will go through with the top seed of the group. After both teams absolutely crushed the opponent on their own map pick, we are now an icebox for the decider. Team Vikings at the time had a roster with some very familiar faces. Sassy, Satak and Coach Bazooka would play for Loud in the future and are all part of the Vikings roster who managed to push Masters Berlin Champions Gambit onto map. Free. Silence. Mm -mm. Oh, good night. Nope. Nope. They wanted it. They wanted it. Uh, it's me and A split, but man, they've just been Spike so on point. Potter, right? Like they've just been. They've been almost clinical. Raper, Sassy, and Vikings continue the second half exactly like they ended the first one bringing the scoreline pretty quickly to a 12 to 5 scoreline. Going down without a fight, a 1v1, Defo so weak. He's got that blades from the tap, a little shoulder given off from FRZ as Defo goes back up. Oh, the shots are there. He's gonna get away with it, he's gonna get away with it. My goodness, it was just enough time that was bought. After losing two consecutive rounds, Vikings was pushing to finally end the game against an opponent which was on the verge of losing. In the 3v5 situation, Vikings decided to invest three of their available ultimates to make sure or they secure the round and the match. Gambit are gonna have oh. to take the fight to their laps, okay? If you, if you've been able to take care of one, you haven't taken care of the biggest problem that you've got here, though. But it's getting better. FRZ drops. There's the Hunter's Fury, but Tunicast gets two! Tunicast gets two! I don't know that they're gonna have enough for the defuse! It's just down to Saucy, though. Shados goes right up oh. and close! But it wasn't enough. Gambit's insane retake and team play allowed them to win a round against all odds, forcing a timeout from the side of Vikings. It did not matter what Vikings have tried, Gambit looked unstoppable going forward, winning round after round and bringing the game into overtime. Gambit Esports has proven once again why they are the Masters built-in champions as they win 9 rounds in a row to turn a 5-12 scoreline back to a 14-12 victory. We are at the 2022 Valorant Game Changers Championship and to be precise, we are at the grand final of G2 Gozen vs Shopify Rebellion. It's a matchup for the history books, EMEA vs NA and the first ever world championship in the Game Changers history. Due to the middle finger incident, Shopify would have to play the grand final without their coach and therefore the players had to play their biggest match in their career with a handicap. But it did not seem like Shopify was faced by this at all. Faster to it! Glory though! Just Play in the corner. Falls oh back. my god! Oh, sorry! I have never seen anything so clean! This cool, calm, and collected, and she does! Players like Flowerful stepped it up for the team and quickly brought the team to a 2 0 map score. Still breathing, Mary with it all to do. Oh my god! Oh, Mary trying to do it all! Try to let Benita. Through it! Benita! Big game! Benny is in the building! Shopify Rebellion! Shopify looked unstoppable and are now only one map away from becoming the very first world champion in Game Changers. And G2 Gozen is in a situation where losing is no longer an option. But luckily for the fans of G2, Gozen is built different. After stomping Shopify Rebellion and Ascent by 13-3, they did not let their foot off the gas and kept dominating, finishing Icebox with a 13-2 scoreline, bringing us to the fifth and final map of this thrilling best of five series. We'll get some down, KP! Way KP called, has to check, has to look. Mary toying with the timing, two more bullets, finds a shot, but does she have the defuse? I think she only had just about does it. No matter what Shopify tried, G2 was just on fire. They kept punishing Shopify for everything they did and won the map and therefore the series in absolutely brutal fashion. G2 Gozen's win over Shopify Rebellion was the first ever reverse sweep in a grand final and one of the most dominant comebacks in the history of Valorant. 
We are at the VCT Masters in Berlin and 100 Thieves qualified through the top seed of their group by beating Gambit. Well, the match against Gambit provided one of their most memorable comebacks. They had to come back once more. Has plenty of health. Chronicle on the tap. He, he's got to get Bro's it to no fake. He's got to get it to Happy. Oh, oh, he go swings out. He gets four. He gets the red bull clutch. But at this time around, they are in the quarterfinals of the tournament, in an elimination game, and on the decider map breeze. Ascent quickly gained momentum, thanks to CNET absolutely popping off. If 100 Thieves want to win and bring things back, they must find a way to beat the star player of Ascent. While 100 Thieves did look better in the second half, Ascent managed to bring the scoreline to serious point on round 19, forcing 100 Thieves to call in a timeout. And 100 Thieves came up with one of the funniest but also most brilliant ideas of all time. At the start of every round, the main objective was to identify on which side CNET was playing. And whenever CNET was about to pop off, well, 100 Thieves would just run to the opposite side of the map. And no, I'm not joking. 100 Thieves realize that they cannot beat CNET and the only option they have is just to run away from the biggest threat. And it did pay off. All players of 100 Thieves individually stepped it up and brought the series back, well knowing that they are in the driver's seat. He's finally arrived oh! and he gets sent packing! Nitro out of nowhere! And now Zeke in the 1v2. Is it now? Is it the next or is it never? Zeke, what can you find from this Hiko? Don't stand up, Pico. Don't as stand up. As, as soon as this is... Oh, the timing. Oh, my God. He has no idea. They have no idea. And Zeke can only take steps. The gun barrel shows he knows it. They live to fight one more round. They continue in this fashion. And injury in this. Not going to happen. Hiko's got him. Oh We're at double digits, boys. God. This it It's looking like OT, Hypoc. Or is, is it? it? CNET's still alive. Okay, Nitro. There it is. Call on those years of experience. Call Need to rise above, and they can't do it. Nitro to close a flawless round to win it on, and against the odds, against the round score, against every aspect of this game, a hundred thieves just rose to the occasion. 100 Thieves did it once more. They came back in back-to-back -back series and eliminated Ascent from Masters Berlin. While 100 Thieves sadly did not win the tournament, they surely won the title as the Comeback Kings and brought us some amazing series throughout VCT Masters in Berlin. Alright guys, those have been my 5 favorite comebacks in the history of the VCT. If you liked that video, make sure to like and subscribe. And also, if you want to, you can say hi during one of my live streams. Also, I want to take this opportunity to announce that I will have daily uploads during the entire VCT lock-in. So if you want to stay up to date, you've got another reason to subscribe to my channel. So with that being said, thank you for watching and until next time.